So we'll see. We'll see. Verdict is. Just get some feedback here on our mics. Well, we got that last time. We got six minutes to go here until halftime. Flag on the field too. I see a flag right there. So they will back it up. And we'll see what the problem is. We'll have to, to check with that and see if we can get that squared away here. And we're silent for right now. Just bear with us so we can get this taken care of. Centurions back third down now. Faking got a man open. And the Hall with the pet. Catch again. James Hall, great hands for the Centurions, gets the big Bailey Lost Wagon. Keeping the drive alive, and the Centurions are driving right now, leading by the score of three to nothing with six nineteen to go here in first half action. So we'll see now. And emotion toss back on the sweep, gets the block, gets the corner, up the sidelines, that's Jeter. And we got, got a nice pole in the way right here. Now we're clear. So the turns with another Vic Bailey Volkswagen. First down. For 60 years, folks around Spartanburg, South Carolina, have been in love with a local landmark called the Beacon Drive-In. And for good reason. I've never seen anything like it. Anybody got that ham? This place is loud. Two chili cheese on this line. It's packed. It's busy. Chili cheese are plenty. Keep on walking. And it is good. It's the ultimate indulgence. And we give a lot of food, uh, good food, at uh, very reasonable prices. Cheeseburger, fried ham. It may look like pandemonium, but I'm... For 60 years, folks around Spartanburg, South Carolina, have been in love with a local landmark called the Beacon Drive-In. And for good reason. I've never seen anything like it. Anybody got that ham? We'll see what happens. I think we may have corrected our problems with the audio. All is pitched back this time, looking for a block, looking for the end zone, and that's the end zone. What else is new? Uh, 
Baldy against the Broom. Oh, the third is going to be fixing to be tied. Oh, this, this is getting to be a, a every week thing. Every week. Every week. While we were out, they did a trick play. Instead of punting, they passed the ball to a receiver, and then they threw a flag said he was in the Is it Maybelline time? Probably. Starting to make, throw the makeup calls. Yep. It's Maybelline. Now we give them time. Now we're right back where we started from again. But unfortunately, we were in the end zone a minute ago. That's a block. We're going to get down to close to the first down on play. I'm just looking to see if we got a flag again. Third down about one. This morning I thought he was further up that his progress was up a little bit more than that. 4.45 remaining in quarter number two. Three to nothing. Centurions. But Broom is knocking on the door. Faced with a third and one down here. In the red zone. Hunter Weber this time gives it to Jackson. Jackson gets the first down. He's still going. And there's a lot of bumping. Look like bump cars in there. They were hitting those. But that guy's not blowing the whistle. The ball's now going to be spotted on the three yard line. And it's a big Bailey Volkswagen. First down. Keeping the drive alive. Centurion's knocking on the door. We can see right here on first down and goal. Ball's pitched back this time, and that is going to be a Jeter. That's a big Waiting for the PAT attempt. It's up and kick is good. Up to the right. Oh, Room 10. And the Clinton Red Devils is zero. We'll be back with the kickoff. And we're going to keep it right here. To take a minute to thank our sponsors again. I want to thank the people who make our broadcast possible. Starting with the Broom Athletic Booster Club. They do a great job of, of taking care of all the teams here at Broom. I also thank Pizza Inn. Pizza Inn located on the east side of town. Go in there and see all the Broom memorabilia in there, though. Also, our friends at Big Bailey Volkswagen by the Beacon Drive-In, uh, a southern tradition here in Spartanburg. Everybody knows where the Beacon is. Also, Larry's Trophies by the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, the West Side Club. Go by and see my daughter, Katie. She is the Zumba instructor there. She'll get you in shape. So, again, and also by Concoction Ministries. We appreciate all the people who make our broadcast possible. Fair catch at the 35 yard line. And Clinton will take over on their own 35 yard line with 356 remaining here in second They've got a monitor down here. See what they're doing on the offensive defense. What they're doing. It looks like it, they're, they're having class down there. And uh, I know that they've got a very high tech, and they're actually on the internet service too with the videos now. There's a ball thrown out, a screen pass. Is that a live ball? There's a incomplete pass now. Centurions, regardless, had he caught it, it would have been for a loss. They were all over the place. So this can bring up second down and 10, ball on the Clinton 35 yard line. But you know, normally when you're talking about that screen, a lot of times you see NFL's in that time. Technology. You need to see it. 
down to high school. Uh -huh. You know, too, being an educator, how technology is rampant. Hand uh, off to, I believe, number 23. 21. That was uh, Chris Holmes. <laughs> He's going to pick up about three yards on the play. It's like a Centurion player down. Centurion down. I'm trying to see the 42. number 42 for the Broom Centurion. That's Andrew Green, sophomore. And he's in pain right now. You, you get to wonder, and you know, pushing the game back up 24 hours uh, about the kids, making sure they're, you know, they got the proper nutrition, hydrated. One thing I'm glad it was cool enough we shouldn't see many pants tonight. Right. But uh, you, you wonder about, you know, how are they ready physically, mentally for this game compared to be a uh, Friday night game. But you know, in a lot of ways, when you stop and think about it. All Thursday's practices are are basically walking through your plays. You don't do any hitting on Thursday. You go through special teams. It's a light day, uh, really a short practice. So it's not like you know when they say you know when the team's ready, do they get enough practice? Yeah, they finished their real preparations yesterday. So you know there's it's no big deal in, in turn around playing on a Thursday night because really. Thursday's practice is just a formality. Still down on the field right now. Again, we will be with you next week back at Royal Stadium as Steve Cannyhill and the Union County Yellow Jackets buzz in. Union County be interesting there. Steve Tannehill is pretty much on the hot seat this year. The, 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 the Union County has not really had things rolling this year. So, but we know that they have a very explosive air attack. And he's not putting any pressure um, anywhere. Yes, he is. He's six feet, 195 pounds. And his two big coaches have to carry him. Third down and about seven to go. We'll keep an eye on that injury right there, though. This time, drop it back, trying to turn the corner, bobble in, and it's going to be uh, maybe a loss of a half yard on the play. It's going to bring up fourth down again for. Clinton. And that was Donovan Blackman on the carry. And I think the punt team's checking on now for Clinton. And we'll, we'll see if the Sadist drops back. Brew calling timeout right now with 320 to go.
So we will see what's happened now. It is second down. Centurions have one timeout. Clinton has two timeouts left. We have 54 points on the 31 yard line of Brennan. Drop it back pass. The rush is on. The rush is on. He's going to throw it all the way back at the 45. I tell you what, Stringer lives in the backfield. We didn't call that young man's name, but again, Stringer, I think, is just a junior, too, though, but he is an excellent defensive lineman for the Centurions. Third down and halfway back to Packlet now. Got him back pass. He's going to go one deep. It's a jump ball. And it's going to be knocked away down in about the 20 yard line. Brings up fourth and long. Does Clinton go for it again? If I'm Clinton, I punt the football. Well, it's 13 seconds to go right now. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. I was going to say I'd punt the football and not take the chance of giving Broom the ball almost at midfield right here. I still would go and punt the football and not risk an interception or a fumble or something like that. They're going to take a timeout and talk about it. They got two. About it. So we're going to take it. We're going to come back to and hear from our friends at the Beacon Driving. It's busy. Billy Cheese are plenty. Keep on walking. It is good. It's the ultimate indulgence. And we give a lot of food, uh, good food, at uh, very reasonable prices. Cheeseburger, fried ham. It may look like pandemonium, but I'm. For 60 years, folks around Spartanburg, South Carolina, have been in love with a local landmark called the Beacon Drive-In. And for good reason. I've never seen anything like it. Nicer here in Charlotte, so it's still the case. Hey, well, yeah, it, it definitely still the case. Um, you know, we'll see when the season progresses. But uh, you know, I think just in general, the culture, the vibe out here has just been um, the southern hospitality or whatever it is, just uh, very, very, you know, very nice. And that's just not not just the media, but like people everywhere. So. What was your perception of the franchise? Has it changed in the past couple months here? Um, to be honest, I didn't really have much of a perception of the franchise. The only thing I knew until I really started researching more or having conversations was that um, Coach Silas was here. And uh, I felt like that, uh, you know, because now that I've been on different teams and worked with a lot of different coaches, and um, like for him, the way that he works, the way he cares about the, the team and the players and how much he puts into it, 
Um, I was just like, man, I feel like he wouldn't still be here uh, if, if, you know, there weren't other people that were similar minded. And then I talked to coach and, um, and then met, you know, so many people from the front office to the players and, and the staff and security. And, and I don't say that, I just, like, seriously, security here are, like, really, really nice. Just everybody's just been so welcoming and stuff. Um, and I've just kind of been blown away. What you said the other day about this. You know, I, mean, I read a, a quote from you to the effect of basically that when you had a discussion with Cliff, you felt really comfortable that he understood your game and you felt like he was going to give you a chance to, to be you on the court. Could you expand a little on, on what you were getting at that made that different from maybe other options? Yeah, sure. Um, I think, uh, you know, the surface level conversation is just like, you know, a coach would be like, man, I really like the way that you, you know, attack a rim. And, you're good at the control. It's like, you know, that's kind of uh, who I am as a player, and that's like, you know, that's a scouting report. But for him to be able to give me much more detailed stuff about, you know, all right, defensively, I see you this, these are the intangibles that you have, and now it's about refining your technique, and, you know, in this game and in this situation, you did this, this, and this, which shows this. Um, he just, he's watched film, he understands, um, you know, what I can do. He talked about, you know, some of the passes and being able to make certain passes, and, um, you know, thought, talked about like how I approached the game and some of my strengths and some of my weaknesses that were just so much more in depth. And you know, somebody has to watch me for a decent amount to really understand some of the things um, that I feel like the large majority of people watching my game will never really understand, um, good and bad. So uh, you know, when I talked to him about that, I was just like, man, and this guy's like super honest, um, super upfront, and uh, you know, I just feel like that. To me, that was a big draw. So you felt like he was more vested in you than you, um, other people might have been. Yeah, it wasn't. Fair? Yeah, yeah, that's very, very fair. Last time you were here, you said your hair was a work in progress. Are you happy with it now? It's still a work in progress. Um, it's getting to the point where it's like really hard to make it stick straight up, so I might have to just abandon it and go with something new. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, the end product will be, you know, down the road. C Coach said he anticipated you having the biggest role you've had in your career since maybe you've been in New York. I mean, how, how, when you hear something like that, I mean, how excited does that get you? I, uh, somebody else said that over there, but I didn't like. I didn't like register it, but uh, I didn't know that he had said that. They they were just like, oh, it looks like you have the opportunity to do that. I didn't know that came from his, um, you know, his mouth, but um, sweet, you know. Like, <laughs> as a player, you know, I'm I just turned 27. Like, uh, I feel like the last three years, of, um, if I were to be very honest, just not um, not not the easiest years for me. Um, and uh, you know, I feel like I feel like I have a lot to give uh, to the game, and I have a lot to give to the team, and. I'm hoping it kind of materializes here. And extra motivation those past few years provide? Um, I'm not sure if I would say extra motivation in terms of like, I love the game and I, I can't like, I'm equally motivated now as I was at any point in my career and I, and I actually believe that. Um, to me, I would say much more uh, grateful um, and understanding of, hey look, like I got thrown into a perfect situation in New York, it didn't last for that long, but you know, those type of situations, you know, really to take it for, not to take it for granted and to really, you know, appreciate every moment. And not even, not even just that, but just to be an NBA player, you know, like sometimes you lose sight of that. And for me, you know, if you asked me when I was a senior in college, I wouldn't even thought I would be in the NBA. So. Talk about your ability to play the one or the two, either one. Uh, I played two growing up, uh, up until high school. And then I played two all four years in college. So. Um, it's nothing new to me um, at all. Actually, when I first joined the league, part of my adjustment was going back to being a point guard. Um, so I can definitely, uh, I feel comfortable in both positions. Your relationship with Steven was from Golden State? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Going, with, uh, going back to China, um, you've done it so many times now. Do you sort of feel like it's regular and, and just part of your, your, your preseason protocol, I guess? Uh, this will be my third time to China in four months. So uh, when you say uh, routine and regular, I definitely, I, I'll definitely be walking through the airports. Like, yeah, I've definitely seen these terminals before, and I'll be familiar with the area. I'll know what to do. And actually, Shenzhen, I haven't really spent much time in, but Shanghai, I've spent a lot of time in. And, um, so uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. Um, it'll definitely be fun, and 
you know, most of the time you go back during the summer, you have promotional things, but to actually play games there, um, it's going to be sweet. What was the inspiration for the, uh, the big YouTube video just recently, and what, have any of your NBA teammates or people you know, <laughs> what was the response from them? Uh, they loved it. You know, I think, you know, across the board, some of the NBA guys, we all think it would be really funny to have, like, one that wasn't so, uh, you know, we, we, we touched on areas that, you know, we, we avoided topics that obviously you can't um, talk about in a YouTube video. Um, and that's like, that's funny. But then for me, the inspiration, uh, my buddy came up with the idea and he kind of talked about how there's so many differences, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, racial differences, cultural differences, upbringing, being from the West Coast, going to Harvard or whatever it is, like there's so many differences, like you get just this, uh, you know, uh, diverse group and how funny some of the... On a wet, soggy day in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Carolina Panthers ran the record to 3-0 and on the season with a hard-fought 27-22 win over divisional foe, the New Orleans Saints. It did not come easy as the Panthers trailed the game 10-0 as New Orleans took the ball and scored on their first two possessions on their Panther drive stall. The New Orleans Saints had a drive of over nine minutes, 16 plays, a 94-yard drive, and took a 10 to nothing lead. At this point, the ball over 15 minutes, and the Carolina Panthers had had it for only three. I asked both Ryan Khalil and Cam Newton if they felt a sense of urgency at that point because they were not getting their hands on the football and they were already down two scores, and they said yes, they did. And the offense did kick in. Cam's said it was a very important drive to answer the touchdown of New Orleans and the Panthers came back on their very next drive and were able to get a touchdown and cut the lead in the seven. The game was back and forth as both only had three possessions. It was the fastest first half I think I have ever seen. To open it up a little bit. The Panthers were able to jump out to an 11 point lead and then had to hold on in the fourth quarter as Ron Rivera said aggressive play and intensity level. New Orleans came back and win it in the final minute. But in the end, excuse me, the Carolina Panthers. with Jameis Winston at quarterback. Uh, Coach Ron Rivera said that there are some athletes down there. Lovey Smith has got that team playing well, and the Panthers have got to take their A game on the road with them if they want to continue to be undefeated. The big topic and big buzz around the world by Cam Luke McCow had been hit, and a late flag had been thrown on a Panther player for roughing the passer. About three or four plays later, Cam Newton was actually hit out of bounds. And when he questioned why he was not with a rough in the passer penalty, the referee responded telling him, you're not old enough to get that call. Whoa. We'll be curious to see what the NFL has to say about that. As Ed Hockley, I think, was the official who made the call there, but supposedly told Cam Newton, you're not old enough to get that call yet. Uh, that is a no-no. And we'll be curious to see what comes out as a result of those comments, both the NFL disciplined him for that kind of response in saying something in that certain situation, a very questionable late hit roughing the passer on the Panthers. They don't give it to the Panthers. will always feel a part of where things that matter most will always stay the same. Other folks build restaurants, Fats Cafe builds roots. That's because every Fats is run by folks who make you feel right at home with hometown service that keeps you coming back. For all your trophy and plaque needs, see Terry Hall at Larry's Trophies, providing outstanding service and products for over 20 years. Larry's Trophies and Awards Incorporated continues this tradition of quality craftsmanship. Located at 1232 Bowling Springs Highway, call 
582-0106 and ask for Carrier for all your trucking needs. For 60 years, folks around Spartanburg, South Carolina, have been in love with a local landmark called the Beacon Drive-In. And for good reason. I've never seen anything like it. Anybody got that ham? This place is loud. Two chili cheese on this line. It's packed. It's busy. Chili cheese are plenty. Keep on walking. It is good. It's the ultimate indulgence. We give a lot of food, uh, good food, at uh, very reasonable prices. Cheeseburger, fried ham. It may look like pandemonium. What if sports were much more than just a game? And there was more at stake than just the score. What if it were possible to see the world impacted for Jesus Christ through the influence of athletes and coaches? We are the fellowship of Christian athletes. And we see what if turned into reality every single day. looking for a place to eat on Friday nights after your high school football game? Well, the place to be is the Pizza Inn on the east side of Spartanburg to celebrate your team's big victory. With the salad bar, the pizza buffet, and dessert pizza, you'll be a winner all the time. Pizza Inn is open from Monday through Sunday, 11 a.m. till 10 p.m., with buffet hours from 11 a.m. until 9 p.m. Located at 2225 East Main Street, do you need a place to have a meeting or possibly even have a family birthday party? Well, the pizza room that you can reserve. They also have a game room. If you need to get a takeout order, you can actually dial 1115. The pizza of Broom High School football. And welcome back to Royal Stadium. I'm the Street Cops, joined by Alan Knight. It is halftime. The halftime scores being 10 and 0. Uh, our games will be broadcast live every week on Cop Sports Broadcast. Uh, each century game each week. Uh, go to the Cop Sports uh, Broadcasting. Where do you go to find it, Alan? <laughs> you have to tell me. I go to YouTube, and I go to the Facebook broadcast on YouTube, and then it lists all of the games that are right there. I just go to the game, so I so go to YouTube, go to the Top Sports Broadcasting, and then it'll give you a list of games that he is going to broadcast. And you can also catch up with everything that we do with the Carolina Panthers, Charlotte Hornets, and all of the above teams listed there, South Carolina, Clemson, and everything that we do cover it knows our post-game videos and interviews that we do right there. Though. So Centurions, not 10 to nothing, but it could have been a lot worse. They, I, I, I would say shot himself in the foot at times was an understatement. They, they blew their dabbling foot off. With crazy penalties tonight. Uh, a face mask on a third, halfway, like fourth, and halfway back to tackle it when the punt snap went way over the punter's head. He was not going to get the first down or even come within 30 yards of it. And they face mask him and just things that, that I, mentally playing on a Thursday night, I guess maybe things you'd expect. I, I don't know, like we were discussing earlier. I mean, they go through the walkthroughs. This is. Nothing but like a Friday night game, so why uh, would you make all those mental mistakes? I, the officiating crew is kind of crazy. It's been suspect. <laughs> so, uh, 
back. You know, we've still got two halves, the second half, two quarters of football left to play. Again, your halftime score, Broom 10, Clinton 0. And, he, and I don't doubt if uh, Coach Turner didn't address a couple of those things during halftime. Uh, uh, I think it's because our team has been down there for about the first five minutes. And it takes a break. He's got time for a break. He's going to be the second half key. He probably could have put a clip on our trash can or something. I could have probably got in and put on a good halftime show for this one tonight, though. I could have done that. Heaven knows I have any. These situations have done it before, too. Bobby turned around and said, Ellen, I need a top dog. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Broom gets the ball back. Both teams have made it back. See? So we are getting ready to get started back. We're about 19 seconds left here on the clock before we... Get things back underway. Try to find some scores tonight. Liberty and Chesney are playing tonight. So Union County is playing South Point. So no scores to bring to you tonight. Keep trying to see if I can find them as the game progresses. Well, the Centurions are getting ready to uh, receive the second half kickoff now. Again, all of our games are brought to you by Cox Sports Broadcasting. And hopefully you'll tune in and then go back and watch the archive. Uh, Savis and Jackson dropping back to the Centurions. We are ready to get things underway here in second half action. And he can do it too. He, he ran back a punt, I believe, last week so, to help get the Centurions back in the game. So. Set and give it a wallop. Hopefully you enjoyed our halftime show. Our and here is a little kick. He wanted to right back on the play over there. So that, that ball would have gone out of bounds if he had not caught it. Over there. He wanted to run it back. So we are just underway here in third quarter. We're on the attack, man. Scores over here. Number 14, third seven, third quarter. We have Chesney losing to Liberty at the half, 21-14. Emerald over Bluegrass, 35-21. Are some scores here going on? We have a sparse listing of scores, but those are some we appreciate much with our scores for us here. Looking those up for us. Centurions now. Not with what Hunter Weber may have. Back on the ball with himself on that. A little bit lackadaisical on that play. So it's third down and about seven. Weber was holding his head as he came over to see it. He may have been holding his ears because I had a feeling Jack Turner was going to give him an ear full when he came over. So Centurion's facing third and seven. On the sweep, with the ball, trying to turn the corner, switching the hands, he turns the corner, he's got the first down. Yeah, right. It's going to be right at the marker of what he's saying. It's going to be close. That was Jeter turning the corner on the little sweep. And that brings up a big Most like first down. That's a whole lot. Go by and buy a Volkswagen from Hal Foster and tell him Coach Cox sent you there. And we appreciate Big Betty Volkswagen. Faithful sponsors here. They have sponsored our, our uh, commercials, our Volkswagen commercials here for a while. Nice little game, man. 
Let's give him about four yards at least on the carry there. He's going to bring up second down and uh, long five or short six. Depends on how you're going to blast it, right? So, boy, I can smell that Booster Club grill up here. Man, it smells good. And short run in, a gain of about two then. Yeah, they've been killing me with those. God, they've smelled good. Let me tell you another place one of our sponsors that kind of makes me think of the Beacon Drive in. Proud sponsor of Centurion Football. Go by and see the friends at the Beacon. So you heard about them on Cox Sports Broadcasting, watching Brooks Centurion Football. You see Steve Duncan. The company. Third down, five to go. This time, you're giving it straight up the middle. That's Jackson. Marching up there. They ran Jeter in motion as a decoy, and Jackson just that quick hitter right up the middle. It's going to be a good battle. Let's walk it. Oh, 